Hi, and welcome to episode four of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy, and this episode is on evolution. It's our next step in our attempt to put modernity into context. Everybody knows something about evolution, so I'm not going to go over the basics. I want to focus on some of the more subtle and underappreciated elements of um, evolution, but I will say that it's a very simple and elegant and even circular idea. The circularity is if it works, it works. So evolution is constantly evaluating. Uh, if you're in the game of life, you only stay around if you work. And if you don't work, well, you're out. So uh, very simple idea. There are mutations and random variations along the way that try new things. That's the basic idea. But we need to describe or define what it means to work in this context, because um, you know individuals need to acquire energy and reproduce. That's part of surviving and working. But the main thing I want to stress in this episode is that working is has a larger context. It's in the context of the full ecology in relation to all other life. It's not isolated species. So we have to participate in the nutrient cycles that have been worked out by evolution. So where do we get our carbon, our hydrogen, our oxygen, our nitrogen, our phosphorus, and so forth? Those things have been worked out over, you know, deep time, billions of years. And so we're, we're participating in those, those flows. Um, and this really is a long-term proposition. I mean, humans have been around in some form for millions of years. And so that's the time scale on which typical species, complex species, uh, operate and work and survive or, or fail. So we are somewhat trained to think in isolated terms and think of a squirrel, for instance, a Douglas squirrel as a separate entity uh, onto itself. But there is no such thing as a squirrel in isolation because the squirrel would not exist without the mushrooms to eat, the seeds in the tree, the, um, uh, the bugs, that it eats, the, the tree provides shelter and safety and nesting materials. So the squirrel can't exist without those things. And those relationships go the other way. The tree relies on the squirrel to plant its seeds. The tree relies on the mushroom to um, move nutrients around in the soil and depends on bugs for pollination and other things. So there are a lot of two-way relationships and the web just gets bigger and bigger because everything depends on other things. So um, these interrelationships go all the way down to microbes that are in the guts and the, the soils. Um, and you couldn't have the squirrel without the worm. And it, even if it's indirect, because it's all one interconnected web that's co-evolved together kind of as a package, and there are a lot of interdependencies and relationships that are even too complicated for us to fully track. Okay, so in our culture, we overemphasize the competitive uh, nature of evolution. Uh, we think it in terms of winning like an arms race. And to be fair, yes, that does happen. That's part of the story, but it's the obvious layer and there are other more subtle things. There's also cooperation. So you know, evolution is not picky. If it works, it works. And so there are plenty of mutual um, benefits that are out there to move nutrients around and to, um, you know, help each other or, or rely on each other in various ways. Um, now, multicellular life was a, an interesting early example of cooperation where the cells were no longer in it for themselves. They were part of a collective. And um, I also want to extend that to the idea of a human body or any uh, complex organism, not only do the cells in the body work together, but the organs in the body work together and they're not in competition. So you can think of organs as a, a sort of analog to species in an ecological context. None of them can function without all of them. You're, you know, what does your pancreas do without a liver? Um, they, they are and vice versa. So they all evolve together. They're in relationship. They're part of a package. They have sort of a common goal of surviving. Um, and that's how things work in the, con in, in the definition of work that I provided before. Um, cancer, meanwhile, I just want to touch on this, is um, a rogue organ that's no longer working with the rest of them. And it's at war with the, the organism. Um, 
it's not vetted by evolution. It's not going to work long term. So we'll come back to that in the context of modernity. So survival of the fittest is a phrase we hear a lot around evolution. And yes, but I want you to look deeper than that. So an adaptation, for instance, that's too successful. So what does fittest even mean? Because if you're too successful at something, you can become so effective at hunting prey, for instance, that you you uh, wipe out all your prey and then yourself. Um, so to, to really jump the shark here, if a shark had lasers on its head, it would probably far outstrip the capability of uh, other organisms in the ocean and wipe them out and then be at a loss for that itself. So there is no such thing as winning um, in, in a complex community of life. So I just as an aside, I kind of think of this survival of the fittest meme as being very heavily influenced by our cultural, um, modern cultural um, values of, you know, macho, look at me, I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm the fittest, I'm the best um, capitalist, you know, winner take all uh, supremacist viewpoints. So I, I think that's not the, the right way to look at it. I would rather look at it as survival of the well integrated, not the fittest, but the best fitting um, in relationship to the rest of the community of life. Okay, so we are all in this together. Uh, no species got here on their own merits alone. There's no such thing as that. It was all a co-evolution um, in, in full context, in relationship with countless interdependencies that, as I said, we don't even understand all of, nor is that the goal. We don't need to. We can just appreciate that it's complicated and, and very interdependent and developed over deep time, you know, millions and billions of years. That's why it's so hard for us to get our heads around it, because these are subtle things that we can't probably ever fully track. Um, so meanwhile, evolution works on the whole set at once. Evolution doesn't divide and conquer and work on just the squirrel by itself uh, and just the bug by itself. They all work together. Um, evolution is, is a, a fully contextualized ecological process that only makes sense in the whole and not in the parts. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Next one will be on biological inheritance. And I want to encourage you to look at the Do the Math blog at dothemath.ucsc.edu because I put up companion pieces to each of these videos. And frankly, I'm better in writing. I mean, I can never predict what's going to spill out of my mouth or fail to spill out of my mouth. And uh, so I, I don't think of myself as particularly articulate. Um, and I'll stumble, and this isn't highly edited, but the works on Do the Math are better thought out and polished, and I say what I really mean to say. Uh, so, you know, please consider giving that a look. Okay, that's it. Until next time.